ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. We hear from the grandfather of the Ocean Beach woman killed in yesterday's riot at the U.S. Capitol. The emotional recollection of his only grandchild. Plus the account of a Chula Vista man who attended the rally and marched to the Capitol building. What he says he witnessed yesterday. And the reactions coming in from allies and adversaries around the world on yesterday's events. Today, Washington, the country and the world are still trying to deal with what has happened. Good afternoon. I'm Kimberly Hunt and I'm Steve Atkinson. Let's take a look at what has developed here in just the last few hours over the violence that erupted inside our nation's capital. Less than an hour ago, an agency spokesperson said the Capitol Police Chief will resign next week over yesterday's incident. Law enforcement says that four people died in the chaos. One of them, Ashley Babbitt of San Diego, was shot. Police say three other people also died from medical emergencies. Police officers were injured and several in the hospital with serious injuries. 850 National Guard members will work in 12 hour shifts to secure Capitol grounds. Crews installed a seven foot tall fence around the Capitol building. So now let's head to 10 News anchor Derek Stahl. He is in the 10 News Live Center. Derek, the White House held a rather short press conference about 90 minutes ago. Yeah, rather short indeed. The White House press secretary spoke for less than two minutes. She took no questions, but she condemned the assault on the Capitol yesterday in stronger terms than what we've heard from the president himself, at least thus far. This was the first time we've seen a White House official on camera talking about the Capitol siege since that videotape message from the president yesterday that was actually removed from social media and resulted in the president having his social media accounts suspended. So let's take a listen. This is White House Press Secretary uh, Kaylee McEnany and he describing the assault as appalling, reprehensible, and antithetical to the American way. And across the country was not that, end quote. Make no mistake, what we saw yesterday afternoon in the halls of our Capitol, likewise, was not that. We grieve for the loss of life and those injured, and we hold them in our prayers and close to our hearts at this time. We thank our valiant law enforcement officers who are true American heroes. What we saw yesterday was a group of violent rioters undermining the legitimate First Amendment rights of the many thousands who came to peacefully have their voices heard in our nation's capital. Those who violently besieged our capital are the opposite of everything this administration stands for. The core value of our administration is the idea that all citizens have the right to live in safety, peace, and freedom. Those who are working in this building are working to ensure an orderly transition of power. Now it is time for America to unite, to come together, to reject the violence that we have seen. We are one American people under God. Thank you very much. And that was it. She walked out of the uh, press room right there, taking no questions. Uh, a number of White House officials have announced their resignations uh, today, including former Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. He resigned his post. Uh, he's now the, or was, the Special Envoy to Northern Ireland. He resigned that today. The highest ranking official to resign is uh, F uh, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao. She announced that her resignation will be effective in a couple of days. And White House insiders believe that there could be more resignations to come. I'm Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. Derek, thank you. We're learning more about the woman killed during the chaos at the Capitol. Ashley Babbitt lived here in San Diego with her husband and ran a local pool supply business. ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala has more from her grandfather who raised her for part of her life. Ashley Babbitt's grandfather says she went here to El Capitan High School, then later enlisted in the military. He says she was passionate about a lot, especially the president. She's my only granddaughter. Tony Maziot choking back tears as he remembers his only granddaughter, Ashley Babbitt. When she was growing up, we kind of took care of her, and then when she got old enough, she took care of me. Maziot says Babbitt was passionate about a lot. Social media posts show she was a vocal and strong supporter of President Trump. About, oh, we got massive protests uh, for Trump shutting the borders, and no, we do not. Ever since he was running for election, she went bananas over him. Babbitt was part of the large group of protesters who stormed into the Capitol Wednesday. 
Capitol Police say she was shot by a Capitol Police employee as people were forcing their way toward the House chamber where members of Congress were sheltering in place. She was taken to the hospital where she later died. The employee who shot Babbitt was placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of an investigation. Babbitt grew up in Lakeside and went to El Capitan High School according to Maziot. She most recently lived in Ocean Beach with her husband and ran Fowler's Pool Service and Supply in Spring Valley. The Air Force confirms Babbitt served a total of 12 years in the Air Force, Air Force Reserves and Air National Guard. Maziot says his political views are neutral and while he disagreed with some things Babbitt did, he supported her passion. Well, we supported her passion. What can I say? You did can't argue with her because he never would. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Pain of a grandfather. Coming up at 5 o'clock, you'll hear from those who served with Babbitt in the military. All right, for more on what's happening in our nation's capital, we go to our partners at Newsy and congressional reporter Nathaniel Reed. He joins us live from Washington, D.C. in the Cannon Building, home to the House of Res Representatives. Nathaniel, let's get into this first. You're standing in the very same location that was just filled with chaos at this time yesterday. Give us an idea of what security is like there today. So security has certainly been stepped up across the Capitol complex. I just want to clarify, we're here in the Cannon office building, which is home to many representatives' offices in the House of Representatives. Just across from the Capitol, it's connected via a couple of underground tunnels. This is a location where many members of the media and, and members of Congress were taken to shelter in place along with their staff while there was the uh, uh, insurrection yesterday at the Capitol. So, Things are much quieter here today, I have to say, but there is a huge law enforcement presence. We've seen a lot of members of, of uh, the D.C. National Guard wearing fatigues, walking around the Capitol, a much higher security presence than normal. And certainly there is um, a lot of outrage on both sides of the aisle here at the Capitol due to this uh, insurrection happening here while the vice president was presiding over a joint session of the Senate and the House, one of the most important sessions that they'll do here at the Capitol for the next four years. Nathaniel, some are claiming about the lack of preparation for security. We do understand now that the chief of police for the Capitol Police is going to resign next week. Um, what are you hearing about that and do you expect any other resignations? Well, it's interesting, the chief of the Capitol Police, he, uh, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, called for his resignation earlier, and we just found out he'll be resigning on January 16th. So certainly there were members who wanted him to resign because of the failures that they felt were done here uh, at the Capitol. Also, the uh, over in the House chamber, you have the sergeant at arms. He's the leading law enforcement officer in the House. He said that he will be resigning at the request of Nancy Pelosi. And over in the Senate, Senate uh, Minority Leader, soon to become Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, once the Democrats uh, have those two election wins in uh, Georgia certified. He said that he's also asking for the uh, sergeant at arms over in the Senate to tender his resignation as well. That is expected to happen potentially in the next couple of weeks when Chuck Schumer officially becomes the Senate majority leader. But certainly there will be investigations up here on the Hill. Lindsey Graham, for one, was furious. He said that any armed insurrection uh, at the Capitol, anyone coming into this building illegally should have been shot on their way in. And Nathaniel, speaking of those two, we now know that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senator Chuck Schumer, they're calling for the 25th Amendment to remove the president from power. Even the president's former chief of staff, John Kelly, said that he would vote to remove Trump from office. How were others in Congress reacting tonight? Well, there's one Republican representative so far um, from the state of Illinois, Adam Kinzinger, who said that he would support uh, leading an impeachment in a, a trial against President Trump, a rapid impeachment to remove him from office. Some uh, members of the House of Representatives, especially progressives, have come out in support of impeachment, a very fast impeachment, uh, to try and remove the president from office in the next couple of days. Uh, other members of Congress are less supportive of that. Lindsey Graham, for one, who has been a close ally of the president, said today he wasn't in support of the 25th Amendment at this time or an impeachment proceeding. He said rather he'd hope that President Trump would stay quiet for the next 12 days or so and then allow uh, a peaceful transition of power to uh, President-elect Joe Biden. Historic and chaotic times in our nation's capital. Nathaniel Reed, we appreciate your insight. Thank you. President Trump is blocked from reaching people on Facebook and Instagram. Mark Zuckerberg himself posting that the president's accounts will be blocked for at least the next two weeks. 
That takes us through the inauguration and ultimately the transfer of power. Zuckerberg says the context of what the president was posting is now fundamentally different, involving the platform to, quote, incite violent insurrection against a democratically elected government. Yes, we could see this coming, and several people, several researchers have been sounding the alarm that this sort of thing could happen for quite some time, especially given the increase in intensity of Trump's rhetoric surrounding the election. Extremist group expert and communications associate Professor Kurt Braddock says he wasn't surprised by yesterday's attack, but like many Americans, he is shaken, he is heartbroken, and he is angry. He believes the greatest damage from yesterday's events isn't to democracy, but that it provided ample photo ops for right-wing extremist groups. I think that we're going to see uh, in the immediate term and the medium term an increase in recruitment into these groups. There's uh, quite a bit of chatter online from members of these groups that see have seen this as a victory, despite the fact they didn't stop the, the overall electoral process. Braddock believes in order to move forward, there needs to be immediate legal repercussions, not only for those who acted at the Capitol yesterday, but those involved in perpetuating disinformation that led to the incident. He also says there also needs to be clear communication from the incoming administration that this sort of behavior won't stand. And we, as Americans, have a role too. We need to become critical consumers of the communication that we engage in. That means we can't assume everything on Facebook is gospel. We can't assume everything on Twitter is absolute truth. We can't assume that our great aunt's forward via email is something that is indicative of something that's actually going on. Braddock says extremist groups spread disinformation meant to exploit people and use them for their group's purposes. Meanwhile, Congress plans to investigate how the violence was handled by law enforcement, questioning whether a lack of preparedness played a role. The chief of Capitol Police says they had a plan for what they thought would be peaceful protests. More than 50 officers were injured, several hospitalized, and at least one person is on leave for shooting and killing a woman. Three other people died after suffering medical emergencies related to the breach. More help is on the way to D.C. More than 6,000 National Guard troops were activated from the Northeast. They will help secure the U.S. Capitol and surrounding areas. And they'll stay on guard in the areas as support through at least the inauguration on the 20th.